Greed is one of the main reasons that women kill. Martha Merrick, Nanny Doss, and more have murdered for money. Are there any people who are off limits, like your family, your children, your parents, or your husband's family, their parents, and their children? For Diana Natal, it didn't matter. She murdered her mother-in-law to get her estate. She was full of greed that changed the lives of all those involved and caused the loss of the life of a woman in her old age. Eighty-year-old Peggy Natal was a millionaire living in New York's Valley Cottage. She was a democratic activist as well as a prominent member of the Jewish community. She had two children, Susanne Natal Scacio and James Natal. James lived in Florida with his wife, Diana Natal. The two of them were constantly asking Peggy for money. During an interview, Peggy's friend Darcy Greenberg said that Peggy was tired of sending her son and daughter-in-law money. She was not happy that they expected her to fund their lifestyle. On January 25, 2014, Susanne went to visit her mother. When she walked in the house, Susanne found her mother Peggy Natal stabbed to death at the bottom of the stairs. Susanne said, I walked in and I found her, and the first thing I noticed was that she was bashed in the head. There was blood coming out of her eyes and her nose and the side of her mouth. Suzanne was shocked in finding her mother in that way. She noticed that a knife was sticking out of Peggy's chest. Without thinking, Suzanne pulled it out. After she did that, she frantically called the police. The police started suspecting that she was the one who had murdered her mother. In 2020, the true crime show Killer Truth interviewed Suzanne Natal Scacio. She was shocked on how she was interrogated and followed by the police. Even now, Suzanne has resentment towards the way that the police treated her. While Suzanne was being scrutinized by the police, Diana Natal was in Florida calling Darcy Greenberg, a family friend, every morning. Darcy said in her interview, she was calling me almost every morning. She seemed very rattled and very off. It seemed like she was getting nervous, like the police were going to look at her. Every day, she seemed to be getting more nervous. Darcy finally decided to call the police when Diana mentioned that the kids were moving to Jamaica with her. Investigators decided to look at Diana. They found out that Diana was not in Florida when Peggy had been murdered, but she had been in DC for a wedding. After further investigation, it was found that Diana had not even gone to the D.C. wedding. Police wiretapped Diana's phone and an investigation led them to two other women who appeared to be involved in a cover-up. This led them to Elshia Grant and Tanisha Joyner. It was found that they were helping Diana Natal cover her tracks. The police then found out about a third woman. Diana had promised Andrea Benson $10,000 to come with her to her mother-in-law Peggy's home to murder her. The truth finally started coming out. Before Suzanne found her mother, it was found that Diana and Andrea went to Peggy's home and stabbed the elderly woman to death. Diana called Peggy using a disposable cell phone to meet up. Peggy said sure and let Andrea and Diana into her home. When they got into the house, Andrea grabbed Peggy from behind and started to choke her. She then proceeded to drag Peggy down the stairs. This is when the story changes according to Diana and Andrea. Diana says that Andrea hit Peggy and then proceeded to stab her to death. Peggy said no, it was actually Diana who did it. The two didn't remember that forensics has come a long way and it can tell the truth that people don't want to tell. Prosecutor Richard Kennison Moran said, our evidence is they both physically killed her. Andrea Benson choked her and Diana Needle stabbed her. Diana Needle was arrested and charged with a contract murder. Her husband, Peggy's son, James, was not charged. Even with her admitting she wanted to kill his mother, and she did, for her estate, James is still supporting his wife. Diana was sentenced to 23 years in prison. Suzanne read a victim impact statement, which she said, you had the audacity to come back to New York and pretend to mourn after brutally strangling, bludgeoning, and stabbing my mother to death and leaving me with an image that will stay with me forever. Andrea Benson was sentenced to 20 years in prison. 
Diana was also attempting to murder two key witnesses for the prosecution in a jailhouse plot. These were two people who were not Elshia Grant and Tanisha Joyner who helped her cover up her tracks after the murder. In regards to them, they got time served and only served a month in prison. Peggy seems to have been a lovely woman. She cared deeply for her family and tried to help them. Her son James is a psychologist and it seems Diana was a stay-at-home mother. Why did they need Peggy to keep bailing them out? I couldn't find any information on this, so if, if anyone knows, please reach out. I have suspicions that James was probably involved. It seems they had money issues. He supported his wife even after finding out she murdered his mother and now he doesn't talk to his sister. I hope that he didn't get anything from his mother's estate, but he probably did. Diana should have gotten a job and worked hard, but as it is with many people, she wanted it fast and easy. It is sad that for her, it was murdering her elderly mother-in-law. Thanks again for watching the video. If you like the content, please consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and also sharing it with someone. I will talk to you next week.